But in 1 Thessalonians 4.10, the second portion of the verse says this, Paul writing by the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. I want to remind you that the Apostle Paul may be writing this letter, but he's inspired of God. And what he is pinning is the heart and will of God. It's not just a letter. Paul is inspired by God. He's God's pen writing inspired of the Holy Ghost. So here's what Paul says. We beseech you or we beg you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Now, if you're increasing, does that mean you have more when you increase than what you had before you increased? And if you increase, that's a positive thing, right? And if you increase more, that means you're increasing more than just increasing. And if you're increasing more and more, it sounds to me like you're increasing a bunch more. Good? Anybody disagree with that? He says, I beseech you that you increase more and more and that you study to be quiet. Y'all are excellent at that. (laughs) And do your own business. Parentheses, Pastor Perry said, get off Facebook. Close parentheses. No, let me keep going. To do your own business and to work with your own hands. Work is important. There's a lot of psychological principles about work. You know, when you do a good job, don't you feel good about it? And when you do a good job and somebody says, man, that's great. Don't you feel good about that? And to work with your own hands, faith without blisters is dead, is the phrase I penned so many years ago, coined, penned, whatever I did. Uh, and we com- as we commanded you to work with your hands, that you walk honestly. Everybody say honestly. I want to bust a bubble and realize when I'm speaking, I'm speaking to people that, that are watching, not just you. You walk honestly. This idea that someone who has accumulated possessions or wealth is dishonest is a trick of the devil to keep the church broke. Now, to say somebody's rich and therefore they're spiritual, or to say somebody is poor and therefore they're spiritual, that's just just as equally as dishonest. So, but here's what he says, that you walk honestly. And here's what we have lived for 46 years. We believe in honoring God with tithes and offerings. We did before we even knew what tithes and offerings were. We just believed in honoring God. And God has blessed us over our marriage exceedingly abundantly above all we've ever asked or think. Now, I will also say I've, I've been uh, privileged, if you will, to, to multi-job. You know, there's a thing in ministry where you call it uh, bivocational. You, uh, the preacher works a job because the church cannot afford to pay them to, to only be the pastor. And so you pastor and you work a secular job. The Apostle Paul was a tent builder. Uh, we built homes. Uh, I've been a motivational speaker. I've been a drug free speaker. Uh, I speak to civics and civic groups and clubs and so forth. And, and they, re, they honored me with an honorarium when I did that. And uh, we built homes, traveled, did seminars in churches. Some churches gave us $35. Uh, one church in Louisiana, uh, it cost more to get there in home than the offering. But I had sweet little people all over the United States that'd send me a dollar. I had teenagers send me five dollars a month. Uh, and we've been privileged to work really, really, really hard. And God's blessed that. So let me go back. That you may walk honestly. You can be honest and prosper. You can be just as honest and be broke. And why is it some people are prosperous and some people are broke? Could it be? Don't take it personal unless it fits. Now, I always say this. If the shoe fits, get a new foot. <laughs> because if a spiritual shoe fits and, and, uh, and you got your toes all cramped up, it might be your foot, not the shoe. That you walk honestly toward them that are without. In other words, people outside the church or even your circle of love should know you to have one thing. Character. Or another word would be integrity. I have spoken to fellow ministers about issues of integrity. And by the Spirit of God spoke a warning that if they did not adjust this one area of their life, 
it could cost them their ministry and devastate people in their congregations. And not heed the warning and no longer pastor a growing, thriving church. The one thing that we must expect from one another is not perfection, but integrity. That should be what we're known for. Uh, people in our community may not like my personality and my passion, but one thing they ought to recognize is I'm going to tell you, I don't like the guy, but he's honest. <laughs> I want two things on my, I'm not going to have a tombstone because I'm going to the rapture, but just for the sake of an illustration, here lies an honest man who loved people more than himself. Can I get a grunt? All right, so listen to this verse. We beseech you that you increase more and more, that you study to be quiet. In other words, manage your business, manage your life. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Take care of business. Most important business is your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your church, your relationship in your job. Job and church interchange all the time because of the different levels of priority. And our relationship in our community. But I can't make everybody like me. My goal is not to make everybody like me. My goal is to introduce everybody to Jesus. And anytime you say me or my or I feel, you might want to do a gut check in the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your encouragement tonight. All right, so let me ask you a question. What is the money trap? The money trap, this is a real simple definition. If I ever share this again, it'll be a different definition, but here it is. We use credit to buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't know. That's a, we hear that from Dave all the time, Dave Ramsey. He, I don't even think Dave coined that. We use credit to buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't know, which means we go into hock. They had a report even today. And I don't think the channel that I was watching actually knew I was going to be preaching on finances. But in spite of this economy with unprecedented unemployment, stock market at record highs, more times than I can even count on both hands and both feet, Americans are going deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. College education is beyond reasonable anymore. It, it's an, an absurdity. And then to make, a, make our students take courses that have no relevance in their career just so they can get three hours credit and the school can make hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And now you buy a $150 to $200 book that in the old days you could go back to the student union or the bookstore and sell it for half price or sell it to a friend. And now a $150 book's worth 10 bucks after one semester. See, this is a gimmick. Education's important though, if you need an education. Especially if you're going to be a double knot spy or brain surgeon like Jethro Bodine. Uh, do you ever have too much month and too little money? My notes will probably say, do you have too much money? And most of us say no. Do you ever have too much month and too little money? In other words, you run out toward the end of the month. I came from a grocery background. And with all the government assistance and the programs, etc., it was always fascinating to me in the areas so many times where I worked Things that I couldn't even afford with my wife and family would sell out during the first 10 to 12 days of the month. And at the end of the month, the name brand bread stayed on the shelf. The house brand bread's gone. During the first part of the month, steak couldn't be stopped fast enough. At the end of the month, pig feet sewed. <laughs> Y'all know what a hog mall is? It's some... Thing a jiggy in here. Uh, but it was always fascinating that how things change. And in the grocery business, 4th of July, money was never a factor. Number one day in grocery business is the 4th of July holiday. And then for non Christians, racing season. My, that was quiet. Have you ever considered a Christian education for your child? Then you should check out Arkansas Christian Academy, Saline County's fully accredited premier Christian school at an affordable family rate. Students have opportunities to excel in academics, athletics, fine arts, and technology. And through our dual enrollment program, high school students can even achieve an associate's degree prior to graduation. Visit us at ArkansasChristianAcademy.org. 
So do you ever have too much month and too little money? In other words, you run out somewhere at the end of the month. Listen, you don't have to buy name brand anything. You know, I wear some pretty cool shirts. Y'all ever see these cute shirts I wear? $10.49. This shirt right here was probably $10.49. I'm not going to tell you where I shop because I don't want you buying my stuff. Uh, Is there a biblical, this is the real key, is there a biblical solution to your financial predicaments that seem to be repeating themselves? I believe there is. When we choose to borrow, listen, this is such a simple statement with so much truth packed into it. When we choose to borrow rather than invest, and I want to clarify as we go deeper the difference between saving and investing. When we choose to borrow rather than to invest, we give up our opportunity to earn. That's my broker calling. That's my broker. Tell him to sell Walmart. It's at 119. All right. So number one, here's here's some simple things. Now, we're going to map out a plan. And I'm jumping ahead just a little bit because... If I came in here, should have, and I handed out a bunch of maps, say uh, just a bunch of maps, how would that map help you if I give you a map of Texas and I tell you that we're all going to go to Moralton? Wouldn't help you. And if I blindfolded you and drove you all over today, all over the community today, maybe all, you know, 50 mile, 100 mile radius, and then kept you blindfolded and gave you a map, and locked you in a room, and you didn't know where you were, and I said, here's a map. Go to Moralton. What would you do? You don't know where you are. So I'm a little ahead of myself in that you have got to take the responsibility individually for where you are. Because if you don't know where you are, and you don't know how you got there, you cannot change what you do not acknowledge. So you got to know where you are. So in the past, I've handed out forms, uh, personal financial inventory, and one out of 10 or less will fill out the form. So let me ask you, we talked about a tragedy that took place today at 10 o'clock this morning. If something like that, let's just say you go to meet the Lord today, does your family know where anything is? They know where, if you have a lockbox, do they know where the key is? Do Do you have a will? Have you written it down? Do they know where it is? It, do you have more than one account somewhere? Or they're just going to see your checkbook and assume that's all you got. The state has millions of dollars that people don't even know they have there. Because the accounts go dormant over a period of time, they end up at the state. So do you, does anybody else know? Well, I won't tell my kids, Lord, if I tell my kids, they might just feed me something that will send me on to Jesus. All right, so. Number one. Five signposts on the road to financial freedom to get out of this money trap. Uh, Number one, we must first locate ourselves on the map. Now, sometimes you you don't want to do that because I have found so many people, they, they have a dream, but they don't ever set a goal. They never write down a plan. They never consider, how do I get there? If you want to be a millionaire, how are you going to get there? Well, granny's got to die. That's half the way to become a millionaire. We must first locate ourselves on the map. Where are we? And this is the key, the way I live my life. Don't over-spiritualize this. Well, it just seems like every time I get ahead, the devil steals my money. Well, you know, if, if your credit card statement is attributed to the places you've been going, folks, that ain't the devil. Now, if you have a charge and it's, you know, a pretty serious amount and you didn't do it that might be the devil all right so we must locate ourselves don't over spiritualize it well I just pray more my money will go farther well you can pray and have the wisdom of God and make it go further but if you spend it wrong you can't blame the devil you can't blame how much you get paid so be real be practical be honest with yourself number two stop the bleeding when I cut my leg and everybody was kind of panicky. While everybody's panicking and I'm bleeding, all I did was take off my belt and made a tourniquet. So I could explain to Janet how to get me to the hospital. <laughs> Which way do I go? Ah, what if I'm passed out? I wouldn't even be here now. My wife would be talking about finances right now to you. 
Stop the bleeding. So you got to stop the bleeding. Sometimes you just got to stop going into debt. Now, let's, let's talk about other ladies, okay? Ladies, not talking about you or the person beside you. Maybe the person behind you. But when you are struggling and you're not feeling good and you're not happy and, and some might even say, I, I'm feeling depressed, don't go shopping. It's a cycle. I'm so, I'm so distressed and I'm so down. I don't have any money. Let's go shopping. It is a fact that most people spend 65 plus percent more with credit than they do with cash. I bet if we went around the room in here tonight, we couldn't come up with $1,000 in cash. Even with my hidey ho money. Because we don't carry cash. We have an entire generation. Our giving. Sometimes 50% of our own giving here at the church is electronic. Our whole system's moving electronic. The problem is not that we use electronics. The problem is when you don't count 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Just pick, 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 remove card. I don't understand why on the credit card thing they say, all right, you can go ahead and it says swipe the card. I say, that's how I got it the first time. <laughs> now you just chip it. You just stick a chip in there, boop. We don't even pay attention anymore. I wonder who's behind that. Could retailers benefit from us spending more on credit? Do you understand that banks are to notify the authorities if they see you doing big cash transactions? You want to take a pretty sizable amount from over here in cash? Go in your bank tomorrow and write a check for $10,000. Watch them look at you. Am I being honest? Anybody know anything about banking? Now, if they know you and they know you do those kind of transactions all the time, they won't find it suspicious. But you drive up in a nice car with spinners <laughs> and, you're, and you're pulling out a, a 10 here and 15 there and dropping in 25 here, they're going to be like, hello, FBI. Actually, it's probably the somebody's secret service or somebody. And, and in the media, there's been a certain amount of counterfeit bills floating around in our community right here. Wouldn't that be a bummer to go up and buy you a burger and on a whoop, yellow ink pen? Boop. Dude, this ain't no good. You know, if you have counterfeit money and you got it through an honest transaction, you lose your money? Isn't that a heck of a deal? So what if we just get us a mark, maybe embed something in the back of our hand, go whoop. If you're watching, that's a joke. Unfortunately, not a funny one. Stop going further into debt. Start reducing, eliminating debt systematically. You know what? Everything I tell you continually, study your Bible systematically. Have a conscientious growth plan. Read materials of interest where you have a weakness. Find people that you can surround yourself with that have an experience or a success that you're working toward. But it's systematic. Systematic. You know how you got in debt? One charge at a time. Worst words you, you should ever utter out of your mouth. I like it. How much is my payment? Bad. Number three, develop and follow this systematic plan of repayment while using your faith. Supernatural and natural working together. If you have interest, we can show you how to pay down your debt and get out of debt. How many of you in here have worked diligently your way out of debt? The only debt, only debt you have is your house. One, two, that's couples. Three, four, five, six. Wonder how they did it. Did you see the hands went up? Instead of me telling you my story, why don't you go ask them their story? One thing I've found about people that are successful in any area of their life. They love to share their success. They love to share their story. Number three, develop and follow the plan. Psalms 37, the wicked borrow and do not repay. And we have a system that you can charge up, charge up, charge up, be so deep in debt, and then just file. And somebody's supposed to just wipe that clean. But you realize somebody's lost something when that happens? I didn't write that verse, so I hope I didn't offend. But the wicked borrow and don't repay. Number four, recruit and establish an accountability partner. And I can't be everybody's accountability partner. 
but hands just went up. How many of you have ever had the joy of paying off an automobile that was still had reasonable mileage left? You know, with a nine-year payment plan, you know, you got 190,000 miles. Thank God it's paid off. It ain't got no tires. You know. Uh, find, find other people that are on a success journey. They only have to be one or two steps ahead of you for you to catch up to find out what they're doing. But you know what that takes? It takes, number one, your willingness to find out where you're on the map and to be honest with yourself and then to humble yourself and ask somebody that knows, not just somebody, but somebody that knows how to get you to the next step. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV coming on Victory Television Network at 11 p.m. on Thursday nights beginning November 14th. And we're going to talk about fostering children, adoption, and how you can get involved at Second Chance Youth Ranch right here in Central Arkansas. I look forward to connecting with you Thursday nights, VTN at 11 p.m. God bless you. Number five, wait a minute, recruit. Number four, recruit and establish an accountability partner that you respect, that will keep confidentiality and agree to follow their simple financial instructions. See, when y'all come here, you've, by just showing up, you've given me permission to tell you stuff. Only two people have walked out tonight. Now, you give me, by your coming, you're saying, I come because I want you to communicate with me something that you believe will be helpful to me. So you're demonstrating humility. Number five, create a reward system. As we learn how to create the plan and follow the plan, as we have these little steps of success, you've got to also plan to have a partay. I mean, it might just be a night out. It might just be a, a nice dinner with your, with your significant sweetheart, your spouse, your whatever it is. Uh, you, you need to celebrate your successes. You don't, you don't wait. Five years, we'll have a party. Hey, we paid off a credit card. Let's go down to Cracker Barrel and share a pot of beans. You know, they give you cornbread for free. All right, so let's look at Jesus on stewardship. I'm going to paraphrase this story, but it's found in Matthew 25, 14, through the following verses. Jesus is speaking here on stewardship. He says this, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a country, a far country, who called in his servants. Raise your hand if you're a servant of the Lord. We're friends of God. And delivered to them his goods. He didn't give them their goods. He gave them his goods. And he gave to one five talents or five measures of money. He did not give this guy the ability to play the piano and sing, play the violin and dance and, and speak. He gave him five measures of money. <clears throat> And to another he gave two, to another he gave one. To every man, this is really important, to every man according to what? His what? How many abilities? Several. So what determined from the very get-go that one got five was his ability. If you want God to trust you with more of his stuff... We are accountable to God to get the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, to be good stewards so that when he gives it to us, we know how to manage and multiply it with his anointing and his presence and his wisdom. So one he gave to, according to his severability, five to the other, two the other, one. The story continues. The master comes back to simply take an account. You have to inspect what you expect. So the master entrusted them according to their ability. We know according to the story, he gave them what they could handle and what they could multiply. He comes back, this one guy's now got 10, the other guy's now got four, the other guy buried his, didn't even draw interest on it. And he says, you are a wicked and a slothful servant. Take that one, give it to the one who has 10. Here is the, here is the story there. The rich got richer. The poor, who only had one, had zero. He got poorer. This is Jesus' story, not mine. And he says, take that slothful servant and throw him where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do y'all know anywhere where that is other than Washington? Where is there weeping and gnashing of teeth other than Washington? How many of you know that's not heaven? And to the one who now has 11... 
and the one who now has four, he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy. I don't want to come in here and just waste your time. But I believe what God has called us to do. He said he would send us discouraged, discontent, and in debt people. Part of my assignment is to encourage you, get you to the place of spiritual and mental contentment, and teach you how to become debt free so that you can begin to prosper in this end time harvest so you can give unto every good work as he leads. So that you can provide for your family and their education. You tell me, I, I, I'm closing, tell me how we sent two girls to Fayetteville to college. Just a preacher. We slept on the floor. We built a house around us. We began to learn how to manage money. We began to learn terminologies. I had to begin to reading books and ask, asking people much smarter than me what I consider dumb questions. And every time I said, I, I'm sorry I'm asking you a dumb question. Every time I said that something like that, you know what they'd say? No, 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 no. That's not a dumb question. Man, Perry, you, you ask really good questions. And he wanted to help me. These people wanted to explain to me. But if I, if I just want to walk around in my own dumbness, I would have continued in that, in that lack of information. So help me help you. My assignment is to get you encouraged, content, out of debt, walking in this joy as you increase more and more. Because this faith that works for healing and salvation works in finances. Don't over-spiritualize it. You got to brush your teeth, floss every day, get some sleep. Quit eating those hard candies and have healthy teeth. Quit spending your money. Stop the bleeding. Learn what you don't know. Get somebody to hold you accountable and watch what God can do. And then this time next year, instead of writing me what you don't know, write me the testimony of what God's done in your life. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Destiny Wind TV. And I want to say thank you for watching our program. You know, we'd love to connect with you. And one way you can do that is join us right here at Family Church Bryant on Sunday morning or on Wednesday night. As you well know, we teach straight from the Word of God with a touch of humor to make the medicine go down. You know, we believe here at Family Church, a church alive is worth the drive. And if you're not connected with a local church, then why don't you visit us? Information right here on the screen. Until then, I'll see you right here at Destined to Win TV. God bless. Thank you.